Good evening, friends. It is good to be with you. I see that I'm at an angle here, and I'm going to turn it up just a little bit there. Okay, is that a little bit better? I'm trying to make it not look like I am leaning backwards, because I'm not. I'm going to get it up a little closer. Okay. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. All right. I just um, say it's good to be with y'all this evening. I'm a little late getting here. The message will be online a little bit later than usual. I just want to update our Central Baptist family uh, about some uh, uh, some things that are happening. Um, we talked to Brother Damon this uh, week, and he is um, we've messaged a lot, and he's doing better, feeling stronger. Uh, you know, he had the stint put in uh, a week ago, I think today. Well, uh, actually, he went to the hospital a week ago today. I think it was uh, Thursday or so they put that in, and uh, it takes a little while to get over that. But he seems to be regaining his strength. And uh, like I said, continue to pray for uh, Bobby's daughter, Laura. I think her procedure went well yesterday and just keep praying for her. I know that Bentley is, uh, you know, you saw that he, he did play in a game early Sunday morning and then came to church. Well, he, uh, Saturday had a hyperextended his right thumb and right in here is where I think it really got him it bent back. Uh, the player went to block the shot. It wasn't a dirty play. Went to block the shot and hit him here, and it, uh, the ball hit him too, and it just bent it back. He managed to make his three free throws and uh, even played the first half of the next game, but then an elbow, somebody's elbow hit him in here. So the uh, doc took an x-ray. He's no broken bones, uh, no torn ligaments, but he has stretched them and strained them a good bit, and so he has shut him down for two weeks. He can't play uh, contact ball. He can run up and down. He can shoot the basketball if nobody is, you know, trying to block him or anything. So just keep praying for him as he uh, is recovering. It's just part of being an athlete. Uh, just want to say it's good to be with all of you tonight. You know, we finished uh, the first three chapters of Ephesians, and that is the, the main, do do not that there's not doctrine in the other part, but it's almost a doctrinal treatise in the first three chapters. And then we begin to get into the practical element of living out our faith. And uh, there tends to be two extremes when people teach and preach. Many people either, they're all very doctrinal and they may be very deep and they don't always give you great application. Or the other side is that they, they're all into application and how to do this and how to do that. And, uh, you know, five ways to help your family, five ways to have, have a happy marriage. Uh, five, you know, uh, three great tips on raising your kids, uh, you know, how to handle your money. I mean, and, and a lot of it does have biblical, you know, elements in it, but it's just practical and they forget that it's the doctrine that sets up the practical living. It goes hand in hand. And so we've come through the doctrinal portion. Now we're getting into the practical portion. And so uh, before we, I can say, enter into our lesson, I just pray that the Lord will bless the reading of his word and and me as I teach it, and that he would continue to heal and lift up these who have had these procedures. And he would, I pray and ask Lord Jesus to guide our nation, our, our leaders of our nation, our president, our vice president, our, uh, our Congress, our, our Senate, uh, our, the, um, our governors and the state legislators, uh, Supreme Court justices, all the way down to the lowest court in our land, our, our mayors, our uh, city councilmen and women, aldermen, uh, whatever... Uh, leadership there may be, uh, even the dog catcher in, the, in our land, Lord. May everybody that's an elected posi position help the godly people to live for you and to lead rightly. And uh, for those who don't know the Lord, we just pray that they would come to know him and, and, and rule and lead and serve uh, in, in the way that would be pleasing uh, to the Lord. And uh, we, we pray for revival, for reformation in the land. And uh, pray that the Lord would forgive us today of our sins and help us not to sin help us instead to, to walk and live in holiness and as uh, our lord jesus does this we'll give him the credit praise honor and glory for we ask it in his name all of god's people said amen we get into the book of ephesians and if we go into the fourth chapter here the apostle paul is talking about unity in the body of christ and he says i therefore and of course anytime you see therefore what do you need to do there? You need to go back, okay, and look 
and see what was the previous subject about. And we had been talking about a prayer for spiritual strength. And that's what uh, Paul was praying that. And he, I mean, last week, you know, I had a shouting fit. So I was teaching this, uh, talking about the, the God who is able to do uh, far more abundantly, super abundantly, okay, above all that we ask or even think. And so I pray that you've been living in that truth this week. If you haven't, if you sort of forgot about it, well, I'm reminding you about it. Uh, our God is able to super abundantly do above and beyond all that we ask or think. We can't even imagine all that God can and, and is willing to do for us. And we need to pray to him. And he has power. And he has, um, and is to be glory in, in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations. So God is to be glorified in his church. And he is forever and ever. So Paul, thinking of that, Paul says, I, based on all this power that we have in Christ and um, all these things, uh, all the authority that we have as the people of God, uh, Paul was praying that they would know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge. So he says, I, therefore, prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. And I'm going to stop right there. Uh, we got more to say about unity in the body, but I think that's all we can uh, bite off for tonight. As we look in God's Word, we want to see here that says, you know, Paul says, I therefore a prisoner for the Lord. Uh, Paul was uh, the Lord's prisoner. He was in prison and he was um, uh, the Lord's prisoner. He was the one who was uh, surrendered to Jesus. He was, um, you know, Paul was probably under house arrest at this time. And notice that Paul, even though he was under house arrest, wasn't, oh, woe is me. It's just so terrible. What am I going to do? He's out building up the Christians. He's evangelizing people uh, in the uh, guards and other people that came in to see him. Uh, there were other Christians that were allowed to come in and visit with him. And the Apostle Paul was able to visit with them and was able to minister in the name of Jesus. So Paul says, look, in light of all this that we've been through, the power that we have in Christ, uh, I'm a prisoner for the Lord, but uh, I'm, I'm urging you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. A lot of, again, I, I agree that we stumble and fall in sin, even as Christians, but we're to strive to not do that and to walk a holy walk, to, to study this word, to pray, to do these things, and to walk worthy of the calling. Uh, you know, it's like I say, it's in this, this, these last three chapters, chapters four, five, and six, the Apostle Paul is, is unfolding the, the walk, and that's what he says, to walk in a manner, that's to live. One's walk is one's life, how one's living. One is to live this life of good works. Uh, it speaks of moral conduct. We don't necessarily want to do what the legalists do, in which they will live morally, but they miss the grace and mercy that's behind it. But if you have experienced the grace of God, you're going to desire to live according to his moral command. And we see too much of this today, you know, with people. Uh, we've just dropped the holy standards of the Lord. And uh, in our churches today, many people will choose to, to live together and cohabit before they ever marry. And we're not talking about people who are new to the faith, that never have been taught. We're talking about people that should know better. And they, uh, this, this is a common thing. It's become a big problem in the church. And a lot of people have become very sexually immoral. And there's a lot of people that, you know, profess to be Christians that speak and talk in ways that are not godly. And, you know, Paul is telling us to walk in a manner worthy. To live in a manner worthy of the calling that we've, to which we've been called, the you know, there was this, this calling that was mentioned in, in, in chapter 1, verse 8. The Apostle Paul uh, speaks of a hope to which believers are called. Chapter 1, verse 8. Let me just go back there a moment where he says, um, let me find it here. Um, 
he would have said, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished on us, a wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ. But he, he lavished these things on us in all wisdom and insight. He did this for us. He put a calling on us. He lavished these things on us in wisdom and in insight. And we have been called. We've been called to this one hope, this glorious hope. And now he's focusing on this life to which we're called. He's a, and he's and he's talked about this. He's already given us some idea of its shape and, and the, the significance of this life. And like I said, chapter 1, verse 4, where he says, Even as he chose us in him, that's in Christ, for the foundation of the world, that here's what should happen, that we should be holy and blameless before him. That's his purpose for us. Chapter 2, verse 10. It says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So you are to walk in the Lord. You are to live for the Lord. And to walk and to do good works. And you're to do this, as it says in verse 2, with all humility and gentleness. All humility. Gentleness. One thing that's happening in the evangelical church, uh, and it's it's crumbling. And there's a part of me that's sad about that. There's a part of me that says, well, God's got to tear it down so he can make it what it needs to be. And there's a lot of ego. There's a lot of ego sometimes amongst ministers and singers. and There's no place for that in God's church. No place for this sinful pride trying to outdo one another, trying to out-preach one another. Um... You know, we should be able to rejoice in those who have gifts that are greater than ours and thank God for them. But, but at the same time, we're to, um, we're to be a people of humility and gentleness. With patience, bearing with one another in love. Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Yeah, we're, to, we're called with all, you know, with all humility and gentleness. I know that times are hard and difficult and there's been a lot of wickedness in our land and it's sad that many of us who are trying to, to live a godly life and trying to teach God's people according to God's word we just outright get attacked sometimes because oh so and so didn't bear down on it and preach hard I like for this preacher to step on my toes and I'm like I, you know I'm going to try to teach the truth that's my goal when I do it, it, it will hit you. It hits me before it hits you. So I know that sometimes I'll step on your toes when I preach. But my goal isn't to get up in a pulpit or here on Wednesday night and, and just bash y'all. Tell you how bad you've been and how y'all need to straighten up. I need to tell you how great Jesus is. What he did for you on that cross. I need to give you some good motivation. I need to tell you about the holy God and how perfect and righteous he is and beautiful he is and how we should want to honor him and obey him and then we can get into the the moral commands and we should be convicted when we fail at those things but many people just want you to bash them with the word they get feel guilty about it sort of makes them feel a little bit better they get what we call an emotional catharsis emotional cleansing and then they move on and they forget what they've been taught i would rather give you something to chew on to think about every day so he says that uh, bearing with one another, like I say, we're, we're, we're doing all this with humility and gentleness and patience. It's hard to be patient sometimes. People will try you. We're living in a day and age when people will try you and we need to be filled with the Spirit so that we can, the patience of Christ can flow through us. Bearing with one another in love. We put up with one another because we love one another. Yes, there are times that we need to correct people. Yes, there are times that people have been abusive to us. It's okay to stand up to them and say, no, you can't do that. You can't step all over me. No. There is a place and time for that. But a lot of times, people may not even be aware of what they're doing. They have quirks about themselves, and, and we can make them aware. But, but we need to bear with one another in love. Eager, in verse 3, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. 
Now, Charles Spurgeon points out that this unity is not simply to be, well, I just want to be united and I want to keep the peace and so I see something that's evil and wrong and I just won't say anything about it. No, that's not the kind of unity we're talking about. But I would just remind you that when we have to correct something, we, we might want to spend some time in prayer before bringing it up. We want to make sure that we are filled with the Lord's love. And that many times, uh, maybe instead of anger shooting out from us, tears should be flowing from our eyes as we speak these words of correction. And then, uh, still it may not be well received, but but if we've done that, we, we've, done, we've done it right. But there's to be the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. We're to be united. That means we don't get our way all the time. It means that sometimes we're going to prefer others over us. We have to do that. He said there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Verses 4 through 6, the word one is repeated seven times. Three times for the person of the Godhead, which is one Lord, he talks about one God and Father of all. He talks about one Spirit. Those are the three times that he mentions uh, the word one is speaking of the Godhead. But then we have four times for aspects of our salvation. He says there's one body, and, and there's one body, there's one body of Christ. And because Jesus saved us, he's placed uh, those of us who know Jesus in the church, in the body of Christ. Now I want to make it clear the church is the body of believers who have been redeemed. It's not just one particular denomination or one location. It's not a building. The church building is where the church meets. But the church could meet, like I'm out here on my porch, we can meet out here in my yard. Okay, we could do that. Uh, we don't need a building. Building is helpful. Uh, help gives us, there's a lot of good things to be said about a building. Not against it. It can be very helpful. But the church is God's people. And some people during this COVID season, some churches just still got out and ministered to people. Others said, well, we can't go to the building. What are we going to do? Just mess me up. Can't go. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And I guess I'm going to watch it on TV or on the computer or the phone, and that's it. No, that's not what the Lord would have us to do, my friends. He'd have us to go out and minister to people comfort people, help assuage people's fears. But we read here that there's one body, there's a church, there's one spirit, the Holy Spirit. There's one spirit that fills us, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. And we have that hope, that one hope, that hope of being like Christ, seeing Jesus as he is. One Lord, one Lord Jesus Christ. There's one faith, one true faith. There's not a bunch of faiths. I know there's a bunch of different religious ideas out there in different religions, but there's one true faith. That's the faith that's found in Christ. It's established with his death, burial, resurrection, his ascension, us placing our faith and trust in what he did on the cross, and then his resurrection from the dead. The fact that his spirit fills us and sustains us now and helps us to live out this law. The Old Testament law as well as the New Testament teachings. And again, every Old Testament thing, you know, we don't necessarily have to do. Some of those things don't apply to us. I mean, it's pretty obvious which ones don't. But the same, like Ten Commandments, we're still to, to not kill people, to not steal. We're to honor the Lord. We're to reverence him. We're, we're to worship him how we're to honor his holy day we have one lord one faith one baptism we're baptized into the body of christ and the holy spirit does that when we're saved but then there's one baptism we don't get baptized over and over and over but there's one baptism and we're baptized into the lord we're united with the lord we we've, we've um, set been set apart for the lord and says, one God and Father of all. There's one Heavenly Father. He's the Father of all. 
who is over all and through all and in all. That's a bunch of all. Okay. You know, we're told in Colossians 2.10, you know, that, um, that we're complete in Jesus Christ, that uh, he holds all things together. I think it's in verse 17 of Colossians 2, uh, or either Colossians 1. Uh, I'm not going to go turn there, but it's, you just go read both chapters and you'll be okay. But there's to be unity. And we can't really be unified if we're not all seeking the Lord and understand who we are in Christ. And I just promise you, if we go into his word, his blessed word, and we study and we, we pray and we pray for one another and we, we seek to be the people God would have us to be, we'll, we'll be united. We won't be arguing about every little thing. We won't be, you know, one week the piano's up on the podium, on the platform, and the next week somebody set it back down. You know, churches have actually divided over such foolishness. that somebody just saying, well, I think it's stupid for it to be up there, but look, everybody thinks that's better. We'll let it go. It's not the end of the world. Somebody says, it should be up instead of down. Well, it's not the end of the world. I'd rather it be up on there instead of down, but it's all right. It's okay. Because it doesn't have anything to do with singing for Jesus, making his name known, you know, I just pray that we'll understand who we are in Christ. Pray that we'll understand this unity that Christ has called us to. And that we are to be one in Christ. Well, I'm out of time, friends. I've gone nearly 22 minutes. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. I hope to see you Sunday morning at Central Baptist Church, 10 a.m. for Sunday school, 11 a.m. for morning worship. And uh, because of Mother's Day, we will not be having discipleship corps. But come and be with us, and certainly, mothers, you are welcome. We'll preach a message that will encourage all ladies, whether they were able to have kids or not. All of you ladies have been some kind of uh, example or influence, and we're thankful to you. We want you to know um, how God is using ladies to bless and work in his kingdom. Well, uh, again, see you Sunday. As far as the Internet goes, see you next Wednesday. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Good night.